Hey everybody, um, doing an ask me anything today for the uh, uh, beta release of uh, Polyswarm here. Um, let's uh, go ahead and just jump into it. Um, so first question that came out, what are the major updates that were made in beta? Uh, a couple things we did. One, uh, we put together a sidechain based solution uh, for getting both offers and bounties in the Polyswarm marketplace up to a higher transaction speed. So we think in the current design, we can do a, about a block every second, uh, which right now we've got an arbitrary block size, but even with a, a reasonable block size that you know, translates um, into at a minimum 86,000 uh, blocks a day or 86,000 sort of um, uh, transactions per day at a minimum. Uh, at a maximum, we could probably quadruple that number pretty easily. Um, let's see, the other thing we did was uh, we worked on the appointment of arbiters. Uh, right now, um, we just uh, vote them in, uh, which means that uh, Polyswarm retains control over who becomes an arbiter and who doesn't. We're working on some solutions for making that more uh, decentralized and um, you know more in line with the uh, distributed nature of what we're trying to do here. Um, but for now, that's that's our solution uh, because we can keep developing all the other features that matter a bit more. Um, and the other big thing is offer channels. Uh, right now, if you have a security expert or if an ambassador has a security expert they're used, they want to work with directly, uh, they can engage them over an offer channel instead of via a broadcast bounty. Um, so those are kind of the big highlights. Uh, the next question is, did the team run into any major issues? If so, how are they handled? Um, no need to dive in here. Um, so let's see, a uh, couple issues. Um, basically just in development, right? Um, we actually had to move account management out of something called Polyswarm D, out of the central sort of daemon for interacting with Polyswarm into the uh, the micro engines themselves. And the reason for that was uh, this is, you know, if we want to host other people's micro engines in a private enclave or in a private environment, um, account management being done in the micro engines was, was sort of necessary for that. So that was a design change for us. Um, you know, from alpha to beta. We didn't expect to do that, but we did. Uh, got it done on time for the beta release. Um, but, you know, no other major issues aside from, uh, you know, developers getting sick once in a while and taking a day here or there. Um, let's see. Uh, and from a Telegram user, uh, Vlad. Um, so I'll try and I'll read the question and I'll clarify what I think the question means. So as an incentive to use the platform, security experts are waiting for end users companies, AV companies to come on board before they develop their micro engines. Yet AV companies are waiting for talented security experts to join the Polyswarm uh, platform. So how do you plan on to not have a blocker here? Basically what he's asking is, is Polyswarm a chicken and egg problem, right? You have a two-sided marketplace. You have security experts on one side and antivirus companies and enterprises on the other side. And yeah, we agree with you. It is a chicken and egg. Um, which is why we've done two things. One, uh, if you'll remember back from our, um, our, you know, when we started this project, we said we're reserving a portion of Nectar tokens for security experts to build their platform, uh, build their micro engine rather, and get it on the platform. Uh, what that does is it sort of provides a way of, of compensating the fees needed to operate on the platform. And it also allows us to feed the platform with samples or other things we discover and let the uh, security experts weigh in with those, on those samples with their micro engines as a way to test those micro engines without incurring any cost to themselves. So we try to reduce the cost there. Uh, the other, the other thing we're planning on doing with those is going to places like universities and enterprises that are forward looking and providing them with a the balance of nectar to get their sample scanned. So for both sides, it's kind of a no cost endeavor while we build that initial critical mass that allows both talent and demand to be on the, uh, the marketplace. An easy way to explain this, if you go sign up for an Amazon cloud account today, or a um, or a Google Cloud Engine account, you get some free credit to operate on the um, on the uh, platform there. And we're going to be announcing a couple of micro engine contests very soon with a partner who will also, uh, we believe, provide some uh, no cost hosting for developers wanting to put micro engines into our contest and on the platform. So we're looking forward to announcing that soon. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. So another question from Telegram. Uh, unfortunately, this one's unattributed. So whoever asked the, the question, thanks. Um, how would an AV use Polyswarm 
and what would it look like to an end user? So the question is, how would an existing antivirus program or platform uh, use Polyswarm and what would that look like to an end user? Frankly, it would be very transparent. Uh, what existing antivirus companies would would do, um, and we're talking to several existing antivirus companies and how we can help with their workload, is sort of the same way they use VirusTotal today. And they use VirusTotal as sort of a second level filter. If their heuristics or their signature base is not sure if something's malicious or not, they actually send it out to VirusTotal and ask VirusTotal or ask a wider audience about it to be doubly sure before they render a sort of verdict through their own antivirus software. Polyswarm can be used in much the same way as a as an addition to VirusTotal or a replacement, um, where instead of asking a centralized service and other antivirus engines, VirusTotal, you're asking a distributed platform of security experts who have built micro engines. Um, so that's that's sort of how it replay or how it uh, could be leveraged in an existing antivirus thing. Uh, from somebody named Robin, uh, thanks from, for the question, Robin. Uh, do you have enough tokens if there are a huge number of developers that create micro engines? And how many developers uh, can you reach or work along with? Okay, so I'll take that in two parts. Do you have enough tokens? Um, each Nectar token is divisible by 18 decimal places. So that means that essentially each Nectar token is divisible enough to um, ensure that, you know, barring the heat death of the universe, we have enough tokens for everybody um, that wants to be on the platform. Uh, now, the question becomes, what is the conversion? Um, you know, how does somebody acquire uh, Nectar tokens and at what value? Um, and that's, that's a question that the market determines. Uh, the second part to that question, how many developers can you reach or work along with? So a good example is we're going to a conference, uh, a crypto developers conference uh, and security. It's, it's, it's actually pretty security focused if you look through the lineup. Uh, it's called, I believe, Cryptic 2018. It'll be at the Computer History Museum, um, I believe on the 11th of this month. And in that conference, there are a thousand crypto developers showing up, right? A subset of those are security developers and this is just one, one conference. So we'll be talking about our sort of bounty program for micro engines, uh, how we're looking at running that and the rewards that'll be available for developers getting engaged with that program. Um, so, you know, good numbers there, 100, 150, probably security focused developers at that conference, right? And that's just one conference in Silicon Valley. Um, that's sort of qualitative of the numbers that are out there, but uh, you know, that's how we're engaging. Um, let's see, do you think security experts will be able to better able to build micro engines after Gamma um, or do they have enough to work with the actual code? So we think in beta, actually, um, they can take a look at what we've developed now. And now that there's offers and bounty support, uh, we think developers can start developing their micro engines against beta. Um, however, we think the API will change between beta and gamma just a little bit. But as long as you get the initial concepts in beta, how we're using side chains, how you're able to deposit Nectar onto the side chain to get faster transactional throughput and uh, no gas costs, essentially, um, we think that'll be... Um, uh, enough for people to get working, uh, which is why we sort of starting to engage security experts more heavily after beta. Uh, we think they have more to work with, whereas with alpha, uh, they basically just had offers or sorry, uh, bounties to, uh, to work with and Polyswarm D had just been written. So it, uh, you know, we wanted to give a little bit more maturity to the software product. From Eric, uh, do you want NCT to be worth more so you can pay developers less tokens to match the reward? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, so let me let me rephrase it now I understand it. Uh, so obviously we want Nectar to be worth more, right? Um, because we want developers to be incentivized to provide great micro engines uh, for better antivirus services to the world. Um, and we think a large part of doing that is providing the financial motivation. Uh, at this stage, um, you know, we uh, we think that the value is, is okay and it will be enough to bootstrap developers. Um, we are also looking into how we would leverage some of the cash uh, to sort of fund interesting micro engines that we believe in. So Eric, I don't know if that answered your question or not. You're welcome to follow up in the YouTube chat and um, 
hopefully we'll follow up there. From another YouTube watcher, sorry, this is unattributed. Is there a way for regular people to track the evolution of the marketplace? Um, probably in beta, not really. Uh, we don't have a lot of good statistics. So if you're talking about things like how many security experts are responding to bounties and offers, um, right now there's not a good leaderboard or a, stat or a stats interface for that. It's something we plan on providing for our own purposes. Uh, so we can look at sort of open sourcing the endpoints for that. Um, I would expect something for that to come online in between Gamma and 1.0, uh, but there's no firm commitments in the roadmap yet on that. But yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, I think we're getting to a place where as security experts uh, join the marketplace, you know, we'll make social media announcements and, and obviously tell you all about what they're doing. Uh, but there's no no good way to track activity right now from a from a regular person's perspective. Um, right now, Polyswarm has no AV partners. How are scans going to be executed? Does the ambassador end user have to individually submit files? Uh, so this is a two part question. Uh, scans are basically executed. There's a couple exemplar micro engines up on GitHub right now. Uh, for example, there's Clam AV, which is an open source antivirus scanner. And we have other micro engines that we're going to release that hook into existing antivirus engines. Um, these are mostly to provide samples to micro engine developers, uh, but we plan on deploying uh, things like Clam AV just, just for fun. Um, so when you submit a, a file to the Polyswarm marketplace, it'll actually be scanned by a couple open source and maybe one closed source scanners. Uh, I will say we are actively pursuing uh, AV company partnerships, and uh, we've had a lot of good early discussions there, and we continue to have them. Uh, most of it surrounds, uh, you know, how can we how can we help each other? How can they provide better antivirus service to their existing users, and how can they augment that with Polyswarm? Let's see. Um, what else? How much of the file will experts be able to see? For example, if a sensitive PDF is submitted to Polyswarm that needs scanning, will they be able to see that? Uh, currently, experts will be able to see all of the file by nature of how Polyswarm works, right? In order to detect malicious software, uh, we basically need to um, you know, have full access to the file. Now, in this release beta, uh, we've created this ability to do side chains. Um, and the idea, uh, mostly it was for scalability to start, uh, but the idea is that we may have several side chains and some of those side chains are invite only, meaning only the, um, uh, the security experts that a customer wishes to see the file um, will be invited to the side chain. That's for bounties. For offers, uh, the offer is only between you and the security expert at the moment. Um, so this idea of keeping a, a, a sensitive sample private, um, we're going to give ambassadors and enterprises lots of options to sort of make their data confidential. Uh, the other thing uh, to know about that is that we're working on longer term confidentiality solutions um, and even working on a side chain that, that we host ourselves. Um, meaning Polyswarm provides the hosting environment. And the idea of that side chain is that micro engines can see and handle the file, but the, the micro engine doesn't actually share the file back with the security expert or leak any data about what's in the file. Um, so we're researching that heavily right now. Uh, you know, that's a sort of post 1.0 feature. Um, right now we're just relying on the invite only side chains as a stopgap measure. Let's see. What else do we have in here? Tell us about, uh, <laughs> as soon as I stop laughing about this this uh, this handle, 24 feels per second, you gotta tell me what that refers to because there's a story behind it, I'm sure. Um, tell, about, tell us about the staking of tokens by arbiters. Sure, so um, we came up with a, a starting arbiter selection algorithm uh, in this release. And the idea behind that was that um, we vote arbiters in, but when we vote arbiters in, they need to, mo they need to meet a few criteria to make sure that they're, they're serious about participation in this marketplace, right? And also to determine how serious they are. So currently what the arbiters do is they stake an amount of nectar tokens to be able to vote. And they have to stake at least 10 million nectar tokens to be able to vote on outcomes. Remember, these are invite only arbiters. 
And these uh, these tokens uh, must be aged, mean, meaning they must be, I believe currently the number is four months, meaning they must be held for four months before these arbiters are invited in to weigh in. And um, these uh, tokens are held for staking um, and allow the arbiters to vote on ground truth. Now, the interesting part to this is once ground truth is determined, the, uh, the fees for that bounty are redistributed to the ar arbiters relative to their stake. So say an arbiter is, has staked 10 million tokens, another arbiter staked 100 million tokens. Well, then um, the arbiter who has staked 100 million tokens will actually be paid 10 times the fees that the guy who staked 10 million tokens will be paid. Uh, Right now, what we're working on is figuring out what happens when an arbiter gets it wrong. Should their stake be modified? Should they be prevented from voting? Or should there be some sort of putative measure to um, to redistribute that stake or lock off that stake for a longer period of time? Uh, so that's how we're thinking about staking right now um, to uh, uh, to sort of start the, the process. And your follow-up question is, how do you convince them to put money in an NTT stake? Well, the answer to that is pretty simple. Uh, in order to collect fees, um, arbiters need to put a stake in the first place. So it's kind of like um, uh, this idea of, um, you know, staking the principle of a loan in order to earn interest, right? Uh, the arbiters would be putting the stake in in the first place so they can earn a return on that stake, essentially, by providing the service of arbitration and voting on on outcomes, right? So it, it guarantees the network that they have a stake in the trustworthiness of the network, right? Because their their tokens are at risk if they destroy trustworthiness in the network. Uh, but it also has this effect of, of sort of determining how much return they can gain on the work that they put in to gather these fees in the first place. Oh, 24 fuels per second. You got good questions for me today. Have you kept in contact with Block Tower and the other big investors? What is your relationship with them? And how are the advisors helping you guys out in the market situation? Um, yeah, so the answer to this is, is uh, I'll be very direct. Uh, we've had our heads down building the product. Um, they've been very supportive and they know we're in development mode. So their ask from us have been very little. And we are basically uh, leveraging those relationships right now in order to um, build essentially partnerships with enterprises, existing security companies, and AVs. So what that means is if there's a network that's also an early uh, contributor um, or somebody that they know, we'll, we'll ask them if they can provide a warm introduction. Uh, so we are leveraging those effects, um, but we're not, um, you know, we're not uh, uh, doing a ton on the, um, on the marketing side right now simply because we are building up the product. Um, so uh, good speed for gamma. Thanks, 24 fields per second. And also, let me know about this, uh, this, this screen name. I'm super interested now. Um, let's see. So I guess uh, what's up next for gamma? Uh, what we're doing for gamma is providing a bit more visibility and discoverability to micro engines. Um, and the idea is to take, um, you know, micro engines people have developed and really uh, showcase them and make them discoverable for enterprises willing to wanting to uh, um, to sort of uh, make offers directly to security experts uh, per the earlier question how can we see what security experts are on the on the marketplace uh, this micro engine registry should be a good way to sort of keep track on on how micro engines are being built by who and for what purpose uh, in in the absence of uh, sort of a direct api for understanding you know bids and offers that are going on if you're a regular person Anyway, uh, with that, I will conclude the AMA. Uh, thanks for listening and, um, you know, happy to see questions or whatever over Telegram, but uh, back to development.